five levels or uh, universe, multiverse, and metaverse, universe, and omniverse, five. But then the last time I went up to six and seven, and now I'm starting to believe, you know, in the seven levels and seven universes like Russian dolls, but also minimum of 10 dimensions, and we may want to discuss 13, but I don't know how. Yeah, do you get into realms and dimensions and places and space at all in the cosmos? You know, scientifically um, or with quantum entanglement or quantum mechanics. You know what um, I'm talking about, like your I your do, soul do, or your I spirit. Do. Okay. I do. If you can talk Remember, about that. Oh uh, well, uh, well, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and and Buddhism, to me are. Are, are very much hand in hand. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I do believe that some of the way early lamas, way back in the, like eighth century, they were some of the first quantum theorists, even you know, because um, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's very dimensional. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and the the things that they teach are are just that only in different words so um yeah i'm afraid for me to really go into great depth i would have to use a lot of uh sanskrit and tibetan terms that would probably uh throw everyone off um uh, yeah yeah so, well, well that, maybe that yeah. could take years to go through all that, <laughs> but we can have you well, back, sure. and when you, yeah. you know, you can maybe write an p- article or two up, and we could post it on one of our websites, or even one called Teach Marcy Two Radio, and have discussions on that. But you know, everybody has a different way they express themselves, and are assembling knowledge and communication of that, and some people call it the knowing or no. the awareness. I would invite anyone who's interested uh, to listen to a woman. She's on YouTube. Every, her name is Jean Houston, J-E-A-N-H-U-S-T-O-N. I believe she's Ph.D., and she's uh, very much into the quantum uh, side of, of it all. Okay. So she would be a better authority than myself, of course. <laughs> Okay, well that's nice to help. We yeah. appreciate it, and it's hard to know uh, how to do what we do and how to get people to work together. And one of the hardest things I've ever done is being in service to others. And the best teachers I've had is by doing something. Even for like my daughter's headstone, my my daughter, you know, my other daughter went out and she just cried t- tonight cause, or today. So she went out, and the rain had messed up where we buried my other daughter, and the, the ground had fallen, and they took her flowers away, and you know she put spent eighty to hundred just on little things, so she didn't know where Gigi was. It's in a big cemetery, and it's very, very nice, Holy Cross in Pensacola. But you know we're talking death and things, and you know it takes so much money to bury somebody, and she didn't want to be cremated. Now you know I guess Buddhists oh. can be cremated, but she believed the old way, and that her body would be. Uh, I think what they, they call it, bring up, even though we know Jesus can create anything at any time. And, but some people want their body remembered, and, you know, it's just That's her okay. choice. That's so her she wanted to be buried. That was her worst, yeah. Mm-hmm. Carbon, you know, because basically we say, you know, the people with the funeral homes, they're going to tell you, well, everything's going to go back to carbon base. But, you know, some people want to be cremated, and some want to be buried, some want to be put in a mausoleum, and, so it's a personal choice, I guess. I don't know where we're going with all this in today's world. Uh, can you talk about that, about cremation in India and the difference between is, do all Buddhist people get buried or do they all get eaten up by the vultures or do they get burned up? or What's the deal on that? Because, you know, over here in America and then here in Florida, my daughter wanted to be buried. And now I put out on Facebook just to see if I could help get some help on a – Headstone for her, you know. I'm on uh-huh. retired and on a you know minimum income, which you know you and Tommy are too. But how do we help each other? It's yeah. hard to get people even to buy a you know headstone today's time, and they're not cheap, folks. We tried to put a little something, oh, they pick it up. We gotta right. go buy one of those big 
whatever stones, you know. It's, and my husband, and he gets a headstone from being in the Navy. A lot of them have where you bury them. They have the, where they mow, and they just put a, a little brass or something plate on it. But he didn't have yeah. a headstone either. But everything costs money. So we've learned maybe 500 <laughs> to 1500 depending, for cremation at eight to 10000 uh-huh. average. So say oh, yeah. Steffi took... Steffi fortunately had it. I didn't have it in savings. I'll live hand to mouth like most Americans. But uh, she had it, so she paid it, but I'd like to pay her back. So I'm thinking I'm going to write books right. and try to raise some money. And But even if we can get some help on the headstone. But you, you, I've never asked for money or been a fundraiser for things that I've never needed anything. I've always been able to provide for myself, and I helped make m- millions at one time on earth. But those days are over, so – Anyway, so back to you on death and dying, and how do you, how, what do you, are you going to be cremated or, or buried, or do you have a choice? And and you know, I mean, does it relay uh, on what you're you were, brought up? Yeah, I definitely won't be buried, but um, I, you have to understand that the the sky burial, like oh, it was really cool when I was in India. I was in Dharamsala a long, long time ago when the um. Tibetan settlement just pretty much came and anyway so I'm hanging out in a hotel I'm looking out and I see all these vultures coming to the top of this hotel to the roof right I'm like oh man I know what's going on over there somebody's died and they've chopped them up sure as heck so anyway they do sky burials in Tibet and the reason for that is this trees are very very because and, and in India as well um, they've taken a lot of the trees and cut them down for well for people to live and for sandalwood and this and that so the real it's in India in particular it's against the law to cut any trees in Varanasi where um, they put, they burn the bodies and then they um, send people down the Ganges um, well, I don't know what to deal with where they get that wood, but it's okay to, they they do the, um, there, but the reason they do the sky burials is because there's such a shortage of wood. Okay, that's the real truth. Okay, so, myself, they're doing this new thing called green burials, where they take your body, and they put you in pretty much the same position that um, the Tibetan burial is where you're you're bound up with your knees up to your chin and then your hands, your arms are around your legs and then they put a burlap bag around you and put you in a hole and then they put a tree on top of you and then you're the tree and I just think that's gorgeous especially the way our planet's going these days and then they could put a plaque at the bottom of the tree if they wanted or not, <laughs> but um, well, do they have? Uh, yeah. I mean, is that legal, or is that just in Hawaii? Or tell us about that, because that that wasn't an option over here. I don't think, or at least we didn't know about it. So oh, really? half of it is having awareness and have it offered. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Oh, there's so much on the planet. So maybe there's many alternatives. That the whole thing is being aware. Sometimes you have to know to be open minded right. to other questions to get the answers and. A lot of times it's searching out, and I've always learned most people go by a need. If you have a need, you can try to fulfill it or MacGyver it, so to speak, (laughs) in the poor land. And I've lived, I guess, uh, very fortunate to have been uh, middle class, but I think I was also part of the people back in the day trying to run a company and going green, but we tried to – you know, go direct to other countries and cut the middlemen out. And now we're realizing that wasn't very smart. But now we've got stuff sitting on the, you know, in the containers in both coasts. And, you know, America doesn't need as much stuff as we used to. We need to send it back and just make our own stuff in America. But that won't work. Right. That's not helping the world, you know. <laughs> so we have to figure the whole planet out, you know. It's like we can't afford to bury ourselves, but let's figure this out. So what's the the tree thing. They give us an idea because that sounds very new agey or eco environmentally you know, friendly. I honestly don't know what the cost is involved with that. I know that here in Hawaii we don't have soil, and so to bury someone here is oh, it's astronomical. 
So, but you can get cremated here for a thousand bucks. And then now there's just opened a new, um, a burial place where you can actually get, you know, you can be a tree or you might even be able hmm. to get permission to put yourself on your own land if you're doing that. But, um, I don't know. There's yeah. a lot of rules for that stuff. You got to buy it and all that. But, yeah, I know there's okay. So that. death and dying, a lot to think about. And I'm 67. I'm not getting any younger folks, but you know, some people had good company companies with good benefits and most of the people with money they don't understand that people without money they don't think about i mean i i grew up with an accounting father but he didn't teach me to play this stock market i don't know about your dad but nobody told me how the world worked with trade and commerce and they didn't train me in school how to do bank accounts or how to learn how to invest money and you know back when i went to hawaii in my 30s from the mainland and going through the the uh, government and Navy and all that stuff that, you know, I guess they assumed they'd bury us. I don't, we didn't think about who was going to bury us. I don't, I don't think most people do. It's right. not, we need to be nope. educated about how to take care of ourselves, food, clothing, and shelter, and everything's getting outrageous. So, you know, I don't mean to take this to a dark place, but this is a place that humans need to console each other and help each other learn uh, and talk about, okay, do we have a soul? And if we do, why? And if, if we do, and does it matter whether we bury our bodies or, or not? And are we E.T. star seeds? Do we come from the stars? In, in cosmic theory, we, we say we come from stardust. So, and a lot of people in the uh, Christian world believe we're, you know, the Bible, and that we come from, we're, we're like the Anunnaki, or like gods, or we were, we were formed in God's image. But yet, now, you, you've come through all that and decided that Buddhism works better for you, and the reincarnation, I've sort of blended all that together, all the world religions, because I've died oh, a bit sure. on the other side. The only thing is, is that Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, to me, and and it's it's been said before, is more like a philosophy. It's not It's not really a religion, you know? It may look like a religion, but it's really not. We, we just really but, study the mind. I guess I'm sort of blending all world religions together with science. It's coming out with spiritual science. But I know Tommy and I go. talk about the ascension, but we call it spiritual science, and we're universal life ministers uh-huh. just because it was easy to do on the Internet and to just declare ourselves uh-huh. so we could, you know, have have a – Wed, wed people or you sure. know, all those ministers, but my ascension age was everything after twelve twenty one twelve. And Robert O'Dean or Bob Dean that went to I never went to any UFO conferences or anything. I don't even know if Tommy did or not. But you know I was in MUFON for a while. But uh, from nineteen sixty seven to twenty seventeen is fifty years of investigation, being involved with the government and clearances and all of that, and death and dying and out of body and. All of this is coming together, and I just – I've, like, got the spiritual science and the ascension age, but what does that mean? I've got a soul. You've got a soul. Tommy's got a soul. How do we – I don't know if we can all agree or, or just agree to disagree that everybody has a soul or a con- – we know we have a container. That's our body-mind, but each person – and you know this, Namgal, with every person that's got a brain, and we're working on brain mapping, and all these neurons, how many universes do we have inside of us? Just each neuron could be a universe, a bubble in our brain. It's really interesting. So how, how do you deal with everybody could be a different universe, and everybody could have their own god or no god? It's, it's all – do you deal with free will and free choice? Or you know, oh, live and sure. let live, so to speak. <laughs> well, well, uh, well, that's, that's, that's philosophy, that's right? Well, philosophy, it's like, it's that's like the this, key word. Yeah, well, you know, it's like we we go and and we get trained and and we study a strict regimen only to come out and throw it all to the wind. Absolutely throw it all to the wind and be as free as possible and spontaneous as possible. And, you know, um, 
it, it's uh it's funny it's funny i get we learn all this stuff to unlearn it just to 